Hey everyone, I'm here today to tell you that I've done something I didn't think I would do for a while, which I've updated my insane support settings for Chitterbox. Uh, why have I done this? Now I'm doing uh, support for the Arts and Guild Patreon. I have 5,500 people using my supports. And because everyone has various resin printers, they're using different resins, everyone's settings might be almost dialed in, but not 100% dialed in. So now I need to make sure that my settings are more printable for a wider range of people, wider range of machines, wider range of resins and, and, and people's settings. So I have to take all that into account. The other thing I've discovered is making some of those supports, even my ultra lights, a little bigger still does not result in model damage. So even, even if I wasn't doing supports for you know 5,500 people, I still think it's okay to update those settings and make them a little more you know, quote unquote printable um, and still with the same effect. So I don't want to waste too much time blabbing about why I did it. Uh, so we're going to jump straight into Chitterbox and we're going to look at those settings and use these and hopefully get you uh, really clean prints, better prints. And as always, my goal is to get you guys, you know, less failures. Oh, and let me mention, I do have a Patreon now. If you support me, I know times are tough, it's COVID, but if you support what I'm doing with the money is I'm using it to buy resins for testing and to buy uh, printers for testing and review. So you get, you know, just the honest truth out of someone instead of uh, someone who's being paid by a company to do it. That's it. Let's go into Chitterbox. Let's check out the new version of my insane settings that still work amazing. Thanks. Okay, so what we're looking at are the support settings. I'm going to talk you through this instead of just show you settings because I want to talk about when I actually change these on the fly. So first, let's talk about our light settings. Look over to the right. Light is clicked. We're looking at the top. Contact diameter, 0 0.20. Contact depth, 0 0.1. I want very little contact depth so I can get the support to go wherever I need it to go. Upper diameter, 0 0.20. Lower diameter is one. Now this is where we're going to talk about changing. So let's say we drop a support. Let's look at how it reacts. Okay. If I go to edit and I change the lower diameter, which is this area right here, it also changes this as it goes up to the tip. Right. So the thinner I make the lower diameter, the more likely this is to fail. So why would I want to do that? Well, there are times when on the way there, I need this part to be thinner rather than thicker so it doesn't intersect maybe another part of the model or something like that. When I run, a, when I run one of these, um, say, up through the bottom of the model to get to, let's just do this for fun, to get to her chin, say, I, want, I might want this part to be very thin because it won't fail down here and I want it to be very thin up here. So... I do make that change to my light sometimes where I might change the lower diameter uh, depending what's going on. Okay, in the middle and the bottom you don't have to worry about. Although the middle, I like to make sure it's, it's over one. The middle, let's add a support. When it says middle, that diameter is this part right here. Sorry. Uh, So I can do that with a key also. I don't have to click. You can just click delete. Um, anyway, I like that diameter. Again, go to edit. If I click that part, if I change this, it controls the diameter. Okay, I want to make sure that it's thick enough that it's going to support on the way up. You don't want to make it too thick. uses more resin. Okay, so that is the light. On the bottom, I don't mess with it. Okay, now let's go and let's get rid of this. Uh, okay, let's go to medium. So my medium supports, and let's go back to the top. Contact diameter, 0 0.40. Contact depth, 0.15. Upper diameter, 0 0.40. Has to match the contact diameter. Let me just show you what happens if it doesn't. So upper diameter controls. So watch. If I make my contact diameter higher, nothing's happening. If I make it lower, also nothing's happening. Let's put it back to 0 0.40. Now, if I change the upper diameter here, changes instantly the... So I actually think the contact diameter, this setting, 
almost seems superfluous to me because the upper diameter actually controls everything here, um, especially if you have no contact shape on. So lower diameter, that's this part, 1.5. Where do I change this? Again, if I want it thinner for some reason, and it's so it won't intersect other things, sometimes I do mess with that. And the other thing is the closer you get to the model, that thickness impacts more. So the further away I get, as you get too close, it doesn't have time to thin out, so it's thicker going to the model. So the other thing I change on that sometimes, on that top setting, if I want something bigger than a light but not too big, you know, I might, you know, uh, go down to 30, right, Give in between my ultralight and my medium. So that's about the only change I make. Every now and then I actually might go up to from 40 to 50 if I particularly a lot of material I want to support. And again, in the middle, I keep the diameter 1.2. So let's get rid of that. Um, and go to heavy. So the heavy, now here I make some changes uh, right off the bat once I start. So I start off at 0 0.80 now. 0 0.80 with a contact out of 0.40. This is only for the area supporting almost the whole weight of the model, which is at the start this foot. So I put an 80 there. I'm going to put an 80 there. Now look, it's going through. When it goes through, just to give you a different tip, it goes through the model, just reduce the contact depth so you can't see it. Fine. Okay. Once I've done the anchor points of the model, the absolute lowest parts of the model that are going to be holding the most weight, you know, I might do it, uh, just for instance, let's just get it out of the way here. So let's say I do that. Once I've done those basic anchor points, I'm now going my standard setting that I actually use uh, is a little smaller. So then when I go to do my next ones, you can see it's a, it's a little thinner. So those are my new settings that I use. Uh, this still leaves very, very little damage. I mean, if you look at the lights, you'll see, whoops, if you look at the lights, Let's drop the light. You'll see that's still really, really tiny overall. Um, and will leave almost no mark when you take that off the model. The mediums at 0 0.40, even those, you know, that's actually a pretty small support. And if I want to thin it out just a little bit, you know, say it's still, that one's looking a little thick at that point. Boom, I just come down here, change it to 30. It's not going to leave any damage on the model. So those are my new uh, insane support settings that still work wonderfully well in Shidubox. Uh, hopefully this will help you guys get cleaner, better prints with less support damage and also less fails because they are, are a little thicker. So, and oh, not that it matters now, but we don't want to see any bonding. So we move it away from parts of the model. Anyway, that's it. Hope you learned something. Hope this helps you guys out. I'll be back with some more tutorials very shortly. Thanks and happy 3D printing, everyone.